Hello everyone. Today we are going to study about vitamin B1 or thiamine. Okay. So we are studying under these headings. The sources of thiamine, recommended daily allowance of B1, active form or coenzyme of thiamine. We are also studying what are the functions of thiamine and deficiency manifestations of thiamine. Okay. So today we are going to the sources. So vitamin B1 or thiamine are rich in outer cover of the cereals. It is also called alveolar layer. Okay, alveolar layer of cereals. Okay. And also a very good source is yeast. And also we can see thiamine in nuts, oil seeds, meat, egg, even fish. So these are the some of good sources of vitamin B1 or thiamine. So you should know the rich source is actually outer cover of the cereals, especially rice and eat. Usually we eat polished rice. That means we are removing the good source of thiamine. If you consume unpolished rice, then it has rich in thiamine because usually thiamine or B1 present in the outer cover of the cereals, especially rice. Coming to the daily requirement, recommended dietary allowance of vitamin B1, thiamine is, is about 1 to 1.5 milligram per day. If our diet contains about 1 to 1.5 milligram daily, then it will be sufficient for all biochemical functions which are taking place in our body using thiamine. So 1 to 1.5 milligram per day. Now we will see what are the active form of thiamine or we also call them as coenzyme or active form. Active form. Usually B complex or water soluble vitamins, their active form we also call them coenzymes. Coenzyme means they are the cofactor which help in enzyme catalyzed reaction. So active form of vitamin B1 is called thiamine pyrophosphate, thiamine pyrophosphate and thiamine triphosphate. Okay. But most commonly we study thiamine pyrophosphate because majority of the functions of thiamine through thiamine pyrophosphate. Thiamine triphosphate is usually help in nerve conduction or proper functioning of the nervous system. So what are the active form? Active form is thiamine pyrophosphate. Let me write thiamine pyrophosphate. This is the active form or coenzyme form of vitamin B1 or thiamine. We will see the functions of vitamin B1 thiamine. Thiamine is very much essential for carbohydrate metabolism where energy is released. Okay, whatever carbohydrates we are taking from our diet, it will be converted to monosaccharide, especially glucose after digestion. Then it will be absorbed and it will be taken to the circulation. Then it will enter the cell. In the cell, it undergoes a cycle called glycolysis where it will be converted to pyruvate. So then pyruvate will be converted to energy by entering TCA cycle and electron transport chain. Okay. In this pathway or catabolism of carbohydrate, especially glucose, requires thiamine or in the sense thiamine pyrophosphate. And also proper functioning of the nervous system, we require thiamine. How thiamine helps in carbohydrate metabolism? So in the carbohydrate metabolism, we have enzyme called pyruvate dehydrogenase. So glucose is undergo glycolysis it will be converted to pyruvate, then pyruvate will be converted to acetyl-CoA. Pyruvate, this is coming from glucose catabolism, that is glycolysis. So once pyruvate is produced, it will be converted to acetyl-CoA, acetyl-CoA. Then it enters citric acid cycle, where carbon dioxide will be released and ATP also formed. For this particular reaction, the enzyme is pyruvate dehydrogenase. It is a multi-enzyme complex. For this enzyme, we require thiamine pyro 
phosphate as coenzyme. This particular reaction where NAD is undergo reduction and it will be converted to NADH plus H plus. So this pyruvate undergo oxidation that means removal of electron that electron accepted by NAD this is also a coenzyme this is also derived from another water soluble vitamin niacin pyruvate undergoes oxidation and it will be converted to acetyl coe the electrons from the pyruvate will be donated to NAD NAD undergo reduction it will be converted to NADH plus H plus for this particular reaction thiamine pyrophosphate acts as a Coenzyme. And meanwhile, there will be there will be production of carbon dioxide. So pyruvate undergo oxidation. It will be oxidized to acetyl CoA. This reaction is oxidation, and there will be removal of carbon dioxide. So there will be decarboxylation. So thiamine is required for oxidative oxidative decarboxylation. Okay, this particular reaction is called oxidative decarboxylation. So where this pyruvate coming from? Pyruvate coming from the catabolism of glucose in glycolysis. After glycolysis, pyruvate enters TCA cycle. So pyruvate initially converted to acetyl CoA. Acetyl CoA enters TCA cycle. So this reaction is called oxidative. There is oxidation of pyruvate to acetyl CoA, and there will be removal of carbon dioxide. So this we can call this as oxidative decarboxylation. Where pyruvate dehydrogenase is the enzyme. For that, we have thiamine acts as a coenzyme through its active form, thiamine pyrophosphate. Okay, that's why it helps in release of energy. Where well, how it helps in release of energy? Because this NADH plus H plus NADH plus H plus is called reducing equivalent. They will be transported to electron transport chain. You know, electron transport chain takes place in mitochondria. So this is a mitochondria where this NADH and H plus are handed over here. It was a series of protein called components of electron transport chain or respiratory chain where ATP is generated. That is why thiamine helps in production of energy or release of energy or otherwise it helps in carbohydrate metabolism not only this reaction another reaction it also alpha ketoglutarate alpha ketoglutarate this reaction takes place in citric acid cycle okay alpha ketoglutarate will be converted to succinyl coe in this reaction also this is alpha ketoglutarate dehydrogenase enzyme for this reaction also thiamine pyrophosphate acts as a coenzyme and this is also oxidative dehydrogenase that means it requires NAD it requires thiamine pyrophosphate and another important functions of thiamine in carbohydrate metabolism it acts as a coenzyme for transketolase enzyme transketolase enzyme this enzyme we are going to study in HMP scent pathway. This is another pathway in carbohydrate metabolism. Okay, the scent pathway is not the major pathway, but it's a very important pathway. One of the reactions where ribose biphosphate will be converted to glyceraldehyde, where we require transketolase as an enzyme. For this enzyme, we require thiamine pyrophosphate as coenzyme. Another important function of thiamine is proper functioning of the nervous system. Here actually thiamine helps in nerve conduction through another active form it is thiamine thyrophosphate. That is why wherever people suffering from thiamine deficiency they will invariably they will suffer from peripheral neuropathy or nervous dysfunction. It activates chloride channel phosphorylates some of the components there and thereby it activates chloride channel. By and large, thiamine is required for proper functioning of the nervous system. So these are the functions. So thiamine functions mainly in carbohydrate metabolism, helping release of energy through some of the enzymes. It helps as a coenzyme for this pyruvate dehydrogenase complex, alpha ketoglutarate dehydrogenase, transketolase enzyme. So finally, we are going to study about 
deficiency time deficiency is called beriberi the deficiency disorder of thymine is called beriberi okay we know that thymine is required for carbohydrate metabolism right so that means it requires for production of energy that means indirectly it helps in release of energy whenever there is deficiency of thymine there would be decrease atp or decrease carbohydrate metabolism when there is decrease atp definitely there will be impaired cellular function impaired cellular function similarly we also studied thymine is required for proper functioning of the nerves that means there will be impairment of nerve function okay nerve conduction or nerve summation okay so disorder is called beriberi so beriberi can be classified into dry beriberi wet beriberi dry beriberi wet beriberi cerebral beriberi and infantile beriberi the difference here dry beriberi means it involves nervous tissue especially peripheral nervous tissue where patient will be having anorexia anorexia means loss of appetite okay and uh, they have peripheral neuropathy because we know that thymine is required for proper functioning of the nervous system and patient will be weak because all nervous functions are affected wet beriberi means the difference between dry beriberi and wet beriberi wet beriberi is involvement of cardiac cardiovascular system patient will be having edema the difference between dry beriberi and wet beriberi in the dry beriberi patient will be emaciated or very will be thin whereas wet beriberi because of involvement of cardiovascular system patient will be having edema cerebral beriberi is seen in chronic alcoholic where there is cerebral ataxia this is because those who are consuming alcohol for longer duration thiamine is not absorbed so they will be having deficiency of thiamine this is also they leads to psychosis this another name for cerebral beriberi is called wernicke korsako korsako syndrome Okay, Korsakoff syndrome, or also called Wernicke-Korsakoff psychosis. The two scientists, Karl Wernicke and Korsakoff, discovered this. Those who are consuming alcohol for longer duration, they cannot absorb thiamine, so they will be suffering from thiamine deficiency, and it will be a type of psychosis, Wernicke-Korsakoff syndrome, or Wernicke-Korsakoff psychosis. where there is mainly involvement of central nervous system infantile beriberi means the uh, deficiency of thiamine or beriberi in infant or newborn whose mother is deficient of thiamine okay especially mother during pregnancy if suffering from thiamine deficiency then their newborn baby will have thiamine deficiency it is called infantile beriberi so the thiamine deficiency summary the thiamine deficiency will lead to a disease called beriberi beriberi means this because of less atp and improper functioning of the nervous system the patient will be having anorexia weakness peripheral neuropathy neuritis if at all if they involve cardiovascular system patient will be having edema then we call wet beriberi the difference between dry beriberi wet beriberi as i also already mentioned it involves wet beriberi involves heart okay patient will be having edema whereas dry beriberi there will not be any edema it's mainly peripheral nervous system cerebral beriberi it involves central nervous system especially chronic alcoholics infantile beriberi mother who deficient of thiamine during pregnancy will deliver a baby with a thiamine deficiency okay these are the deficiency disorders of thiamine thanks for watching